Hi, I'm James. And I'm Laurent. And welcome to our beautiful city of Chicago. And we are lucky because today is a sunny day, but believe it or not, it's not sunny every day in Chicago. And when it's not sunny, it's a great time to go indoors and check out all the amazing museums in Chicago. Number one on our list is the Chicago Art Institute. Of course we had to start with the Art Institute because it is one of the most iconic museums in the world. It's really well known for its impressionist collection and two of the most iconic paintings are Paris Street on a Rainy Day by Gustave Caillebotte and Sunday at La Grande Jatte by Georges Seurat. And then there is a very extensive Monet collection. You see the water lilies at Giverny, but I love especially the studies of light that he did with the haystacks in different times of season and different light settings, and they're just extraordinary to see side by side. And then beyond Monet, there are many other Impressionist painters, Van Gogh, Gauguin, Cézanne, Matisse, and plenty others. So there is the old part of the museum, which is neoclassical, and then the new wing of the museum was done by Renzo Piano and all the contemporary modern artists housed there. So in the modern section, you'll come across pop art from Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein. And then there are several Picasso paintings of the different periods throughout his life. And then many other contemporary artists, Chagall, Mondrian, Picabia, Juan Gris, and many, many others. And then it's not just painting, it's also a lot of sculptures and I really enjoy the sculpture section. Chicago is famous for its architecture and of course the Art Institute has a whole section about architecture and design. And then back into the old wing of the building, you'll realize that the Chicago Art Institute is a pretty complete museum with just art from any style you can think of. And if you go to the museum, you're actually going to have to decide what it is that you're going to want to see because there is no way you're going to be able to see everything over one day. There's art from all over the world, from Korea and Japan, Peru and Southeast Asia. And the American folk art section. It just goes on and on and on. And second on our list is the Shedd Aquarium. The Shedd Aquarium is one of my favorite museums in the city. It feels like you're going snorkeling for the day. Yeah, and if you have kids, it's probably the best place where you can take your young kids. But my pro tip would be to go through the week in the afternoons because mornings and weekends are just crazy with all of the school field trips and just people that want to see it on the weekends. So one of the main attractions are obviously the dolphins. And the dolphins you can see from above like you would do at SeaWorld, but what's great is that you can also see them from below. The other thing that's great is being in the auditorium, you view Lake Michigan and you see that on the horizon, which is a nice backdrop to the show. And then next to the dolphins, you also have the beluga whales and they're huge. And they come right up to the glass, almost like they just want to check you out. They're as interested in you as you are in them. And one of my favorites are the penguins. They are <laughs> so damn cute. They are cute. They actually swim really fast. We had a hard time filming them because they were just going so fast. And then another big attraction is the Wild Reef. It is a huge aquarium with sharks and stingrays, and those are big sharks. And what's really cool is to see the way that they just swim so gracefully between the rocks and the corals, and it's a very colorful display. But then outside of the dolphins and the sharks, there's just so many different creatures, all kind of fish. It's just amazing the variety of things that live in the ocean. I especially love the design of the museum. Look closely at the details and you'll see all kinds of aquatic life in the tiles and in the finishes. And third on our list is the Museum of Science and Industry. This museum has an expansive collection of things from all different genres. So we started with a genetic section and I could stay hours watching those baby chicks uh, hatch out of the egg. It was so amazing to see them peek their heads out of the shell and welcome them to the new world. So one of my favorite section of the museum is the train. I always wanted to have an electric train growing up and the electric train over there is huge. You got trains in all kinds of landscapes and mountains and cities and ports. You can stay there for hours watching those trains. 
There's also a really amazing aeronautics section where you can actually see a 727 suspended in the air. You can walk around and see what the cockpit looked like. And you can also see inside the engine if you're interested in uh, mechanics. Then there is the bicycle section that really takes you through the history of bikes. And it's amazing the diversity of materials that are used in designing some of these. Very lightweight bikes and even a bike made out of cardboard. And then next to the bike section, there is the car section with a solar car and a Formula One car. And then there is this section on natural phenomenon. It's incredible the different things that you can experience there. And it's very interactive. There's a turntable that recreates the avalanche with the sand and it's really cool. Every half hour they fire up the Tesla coil and it makes this incredible sound that fills the room and you see the electricity just shooting and sparks flying. It's really exciting to see that. And then there is the industry part of the Science and Industry Museum with all kind of robotics and a real robotic production line. And fourth on our list is the Field Museum, which is one of the largest natural history museums in the world. And the main reason to go to the Field Museum is for the dinosaurs. As soon as you walk into this stunning lobby, you are greeted by this enormous titanosaur. It's really incredible. It's one of the most well-preserved titanosaur skeletons in the world. And then the other big attraction is Sue the T-Rex. It's a huge dinosaur and it's got huge teeth. You wouldn't want to run into that dinosaur <laughs> in real life. And an enormous head. The head weighs so much that they could barely get it to be supported on the body. But beyond those two huge dinosaurs, the Gallery of Evolution has plenty of dinosaurs of all shapes and sizes and mammoth and just goes through the entire evolution from prehistory to now. So one of the sections we really liked was the ancient Americas. It goes through the history of all the American civilizations, the Incas, the Mayas, the Aztecs. It's got statues and pottery and artifacts. And there's also a section exclusively on Native Americans. And what's really special about that are the incredible headdresses and beading and other clothing and artifacts that they have on display. And then you enter Animal Hall, where you have every different type of species that's been mounted in these beautiful natural scenes that depict all kinds of wildlife in their habitat. And there's also plenty of birds. There's eagles and owls. It's a really, really cool section. Little kids will love it. And fifth on our list is the Oriental Institute at the University of Chicago. This is one of the hidden gems of Chicago's museums. The main reason to go to the Oriental Institute is the Egyptian section. You got statues, you got mummies, you even have a mummy of a falcon. The museum is located on the campus of the University of Chicago in Hyde Park. It's a great area to walk around and explore. We're going to put a link to our video about Hyde Park in our top 10 things to do in Chicago. But beyond the Egyptian section, there's a lot of other sections about all the different ancient civilizations in Mesopotamia and in Turkey. I actually really like the Mesopotamian section. And there is this humongous bullhead. This thing is 40 tons. It is huge. And if you're a fan of ancient aliens, you'll especially like seeing all these ancient sculptures in the museum. And if you don't care about aliens and you actually enjoy real history, this is the right museum for you. It's always amazing to me to see artifacts that are 4,000 years old and are perfectly preserved. And six on our list is the National Museum of Mexican Art, which is a free museum, by the way. And we feature it at length in the Pilsen neighborhood in our video about Chicago of the Beaten Path. There's so many things to see there, and the museum is organized in different sections. So one of the sections is about pre-colonial art, and it has a lot of traditional Mexican handcrafts, some beading and then some paintings that is being done on reeds. There's also a great section with religious art and some beautiful sculptures and paintings. The section about contemporary art we found most interesting, some really unusual things from all different kinds of design perspectives. Most of all, everything was incredibly colorful and that's what I love about this museum. And seventh on our list is Wrightwood 659, one of the newest museums in Chicago, right in the heart of Lincoln Park. This museum is dedicated to the architectural work of Tato Ando. He's one of our favorite architects from Japan. He built one of the only houses in the United States in Chicago. And next door, they renovated a four-story apartment building and turned it into a museum dedicated to Tato Ando. 
On the top floor of the museum, they have this spectacular model of Naoshima Island. This is a place where Ando designed most of the buildings, including museums and a hotel and really amazing views. It's also called the Art Island because many famous artists have their works on display at the museums there. The other thing that's great about the museum are the wonderful drawings that Ando has done throughout his career, in addition to many models that were developed. Our favorites are the Church of the Light, which is an incredible model to view from all angles. Ando was a colleague of Le Corbusier and took a lot of his ideas and applied them in architecture using concrete. And from the top of the museum, you have great views of Lincoln Park around and the dome of St. Clement's Church, which is right next to it. And then you can also see downtown. You can also overlook the home next door and see how it's laid out. We're very fortunate to have this home and this museum in Chicago. An eighth on our list is the Chicago Architecture Center. It is one of the newest museums in Chicago, and not everybody knows about it, but it's right downtown along the river. And the highlight of the museum is an incredible 3D model of the whole Chicago skyline. It shows all the iconic Chicago buildings. Navy Pier, the Sears Tower, Millennium Park, Soldier Field, and it even has all the new buildings that haven't even been built yet. On October 8th, 1871, a fire sparked and roared into an inferno. And then on the upper floor, there is a whole section about high rises all over the world, from the Eiffel Tower in Paris to the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. And plenty of other famous buildings from all over the world that are being compared to one another. And it has a very interesting section about the city of the future and how architecture will continue to evolve. So it is a fairly small museum, but it's a great addition to Chicago if you like architecture. And ninth on our list is the Money Museum. It's a small museum and you're in and out in an hour. And ironically, the Money Museum is free. If I had a million dollars. If I had a million dollars. How much space would a million dollars take up? In hundreds, it fits into this briefcase. And in twenties, it fits into that globe. And in singles, it fits into this enormous cube that rotates in the middle of the museum. But you have to spend it fast because with inflation, your million dollars is not gonna be worth much in 20 years. And the museum has a lot of interactive exhibits. It's actually great for kids. And it takes you through the history of money from the early colonial days all the way to the present day. It's one of the lesser known museums in Chicago, but well worth the short visit. And last on our list is the Museum of Contemporary Art, or MCA. The MCA is in a great location near the water tower, just off Michigan Avenue, with some great shopping all around and in a beautiful park space. But there are some great sections at the MCA as well. They have a great exhibit on Calder and Jeff Koons. And the piece that fascinated me the most was the tank with those basketballs. I looked at it from every angle and tried to understand the optical illusion. I could never figure it out. We really liked the exhibit by Car Chappelle, which was an entire room of carpeted images. And the pictures are very vibrant. The colors are beautiful. And it's just a very interesting experience to see art expressed through carpet. The reason why we put it last on our list is that the MCA is a Nash Museum but if you compare it to really good contemporary art museums such as the MoMA in New York or the MoNA in Hobart, then we're going to put a link to the MoNA in Hobart. The MCA is really a step below. But we really like the gift store at the end. It was a lot more than just mugs and t-shirts and it was just very interesting uh, gift. So we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and put your comments in the comment section below. And if you want to subscribe to our channel, we're going to put a link right here. And if you want notifications, be sure to click the bell. And if you want to watch our other videos, we're going to put one right here and another one right there. Bye. Bye.